you must believe that it is the will of God for you to be fruitful. You must believe. Say, I believe. In fact, let me turn it into a prayer. Say, Father. Come on, pray like believers. Say, Father. I believe that it is your will for me to be fruitful. Say, Father. I believe that it is your will for me to be fruitful. Therefore, I declare fruitfulness is my heritage. Turn it to prayer for one minute. I believe the righteousness that is of faith. I believe that it is the will of God for me to be fruitful. I believe in addition to being connected to the vine. In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 92, please, very quickly from verse 12. I believe. And you know, whilst I'm speaking here, I'm ministering to my own self. I truly believe that it is God's desire for me to be fruitful. If you do not believe that God is glorified in your fruitfulness, you will not be able to walk in keeping with the things that make for results. He says the righteous. Who is the righteous here? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He says he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. He says... Um, Give us verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Who believes that? Psalm 1 and verse 3. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever, say whatsoever, business, ministry, career, family, whatsoever. By this word I decree and declare for someone who is following across the globe, everything that has refused to prosper in your hand, here at this studio, here at Hallelujah Challenge, we cause it in the name of Jesus. 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 What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough. You can't do it. You'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear. In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? 
practical steps to overcome fear. So how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.